This is a router. This is also a router. And this is going to be a router and we're going to build it together. So this is a Netgear Range Max trademark wireless router WPN824 V2. I, I've never used it, but it's your standard wireless router that goes directly from your cable modem and hooks you up with four LAN ports. Uh, it's, it's part switch, it's part wireless access point. And for most people, this thing is perfect. But it was not perfect for me. When my computers are all running and performing tasks, a lot is happening in my network and it's very busy. Um, I have those computers in that rack over there, constantly sending and receiving data from project servers. I have computers that read me finance data because I'm one of those. I may be in the middle of a Zoom call and that's a lot to place on this guy. This guy does not like all that stuff happening at one time. Um, and at a certain point when I added enough computers, I would try to do FaceTime calls, Zoom calls, Discord video calls on this guy and n did not know. No, not good. So after taking out the trash and you know this guy, I did this. This was my first solution. It's a Dell Optiplex 990. Uh, it was one of my first dumpster finds and uh, I knew at this point I was adding more computers so I, need something, I needed something better to actually do the routing in my network. So. Uh, I threw in a network card and you can kind of see it down there. Um, this is a network card from Intel. It is the i5-3-4, I don't know. I'll, I'll, put the, I'll put this in because I have no idea. The naming, you know. But basically I, I, basically I set this thing up to be a router. And with the network card in there, I created four LAN interfaces. Um, that was so that I could uh, divide the copper traces uh, in this house. Um, so that I could have uh, uh, different circuits for different reasons and have, uh, have, have it so that traffic doesn't compete as much with other traffic. Um, but the problems with this is I've already had to replace the motherboard uh, one time and I've had to replace the power supply as well. And I'm just worried that I'll be in the middle of a presentation and this thing will just crack out on me and I'll be left in the dark with no replacement. Uh, so we're going to build in this. This is going to be my new router and it's going to look a lot more professional than this. All right, so the first thing is the motherboard. Uh, this is a mini iTix motherboard that I found on eBay. I don't remember the model name or company, so I'll throw that in a little comment. And then of course, all of these items are in the description. Um, but I got this because for $65, I got the motherboard the CPU, which is an i3-3220. Uh, I got four gigs of RAM, and also this one new CPU core, which is gonna be really helpful. Um, and I would just install it as is, but there is one thing. This CPU is not gonna work for me um, because it doesn't support AES and I, which is an instruction set for AES encryption uh, that a lot of older CPUs don't have. So I have an i5-2500 lying around and I'm gonna replace this with that um, because the i5 supports ASNI.
right, um, all of the wiring is done and I believe this is complete, so we'll go on to test it. Um, I lost the footage of the rest of that time lapse, but uh, I'll tell you what I did. So first thing was I put the uh, two and a half inch uh, hard drive here um, in its mount and it's connected through SATA um, to here to the motherboard. Um, I got all of the wiring done and did some cable management or tried to, but uh, it is crazy trying to fit all of that wiring into this little, this little cavity right here. Uh, but it is all done. Um, there are no USB 2 connectors on this motherboard that will support this format. So I, I went ahead and just, just foregoed this because I'm not going to be using front USB. Um, so that doesn't really matter to me. Uh, I'm just going to be working with the back. Uh, also, uh, this PCI riser cable, it was the cheapest thing I could find, but honestly, if I went back and did this again, I would just buy one of the PCB cards that just does a 90 degree because this, it fits, but I don't like how much flex there is there. Um, I'm also worried that this will touch the top. So I put some electrical tape here just in case to make sure that, um, if this edge does touch and nothing is contacting, um, and then I think that's about it. The fans are connected. Um, I put the heat sink facing backwards since now that I don't have an IO shield, I think it makes sense to just try and get the heat out of the system uh, this way. So yeah, now let's go and uh, test it and see if it works at all. All right, moment of truth. I have not turned it on yet, but let's uh, give it a go. Oh yeah. <laughs> oh. All right, we've got a green light on the motherboard. Here we go. And we've got nothing. Nothing at all. So I'm going to uh, look back at the motherboard diagram, make sure that I've uh, plugged in the front panel co connectors correctly. Uh, that might be my issue, so I'm going to go give that a try. All right, all I did was uh, jiggle some things around, and we've, we've got a post screen, and uh, it's beeping, it's doing all the things it needs to do, and uh, let's take a look and see what, we, what she does. Right, so not too bad. So I need to power it back down again and uh, install PF Sense. So uh, let's go do that. All right. Uh, so it's about two weeks later. Um, I sort of had to take a break from this video because I'm still in school and I just had a I just had finals week, so it was very 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 busy. But uh, we're here. And I have the PFSense router in the rack. Um, so I'll also probably make more videos about this rack. I love it. I have my UPS down here. I just put my PC in here and got my PC rack mounted with a long display port cable and uh, USB interface. I love this so much. And I'll maybe talk about this computer. This is like, I put an Optiplex into a rack mount case and it wasn't the easiest thing to do, but I got it done. Um, and it's here. I have the Dell PowerEdge RT102, which is my NAS. Um, but then everything up here is network, interf or, or network infrastructure, I suppose. So the way that I wired this right now, I have WAN coming in here just so that I could get it through the patch panel uh, to the router. And then the router splits off into four LAN interfaces. One goes to this switch, which connects all these computers down here. Uh, and plus some other things at my desk. You can kind of see there's there's a lot of screens. I might get my eyes damaged someday, but I do wear uh, blue light blocking glasses. So don't worry that much, or I guess I shouldn't worry that much, but I am kind of worried still. Um, and then I have these three, the three other LAN interfaces coming from the router. These go to the other things around my house. So I have two access points that are on one of these networks. I have that server or, you know, the, <laughs> Beowulf cluster, I suppose, is what it really is, but it's just a cluster of computers on another interface. And then I have a, uh, a final computer at my workbench that's sort of mounted under the desk um, to get sort of my workbench space clear, um, still, but still giving me a computer to work on if I need to. 
Um, so that's pretty much it. I will probably think about making a video about PF Sense in the future. Also, I just noticed how harsh the sunlight is coming through the window. I'm sorry about that. This is an iPhone camera. Maybe if I do this enough, I'll get a real camera and not have to worry as much about stuff like that. But, uh, so someday I wanna make a video on how to install and set up PF Sense, but I know there's already a lot of tutorials out there. I sort of wanted to have fun building a new PC here. Um, and uh, I also am not a network engineer, like fully fledged network engineer. So I wanna make sure that if I do a video like that, I really have done my research and know what I'm talking about so that I don't give any false information. Um, but I'll probably also talk a little bit about some of the packages, which are, the, which are one of the things that make me so excited about using PFSense. Um, it's that I can install different packages to do different things. So I have one for uh, ad blocking and stuff like that called uh, PF Blocker NG. Um, I also have one that tracks uh, bandwidth usage among all the computers and devices on the network so I can see what's using the most traffic. Um, and I also have something really nice that interfaces with my UPS. Um, and then it sends me an email if the power ever goes down and it has to switch over to battery. So it's really fun to play around with, especially when I go out of the house and you know, I might, there might be a problem that I wanna know about. Um, and then I'm thinking about other projects that I can do uh, if I enjoy making these videos enough. Um, like I want to write something that if the power does go out, it goes ahead and um, safely shuts down all my computers, um, all the really crucial ones and then starts them back up when the power comes back on, something like that. Um, but that is for a future date. So yeah, uh, thank you so much for watching. And I, I had a lot of fun doing this and I hope you had fun watching and uh, I'd love to hear what else uh, you think I should do or cover. Um, I'll probably keep making videos about different projects that I take on that I just find really fun. I'll next this guy and I no longer wanted this to be the center of my network, um, the most... When my computers are all on and operating, uh, the network gets a lot, gets... Uh, I also may be in the middle of a Zoom call and I don't want to be 